Hey guys, thanks so much for having me. How about your host Sophia one more time, guys? Clap for her, huh? Wow. I don't even know which mic to hold, does it matter? All right, great. Thanks. All right, so the stage here in this, in this frame of mics, of mic stands. Uh, well guys, thanks so much for having me. Um, uh, it's been pretty hot this summer. Uh, I was on my way to a show a few weeks ago and uh, some old guy was like, hey, hot enough for, and then he died of heat stroke. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, definitely was. Uh, guys, physically speaking, Ariel the Little Mermaid, stay with me dudes, stay with me. Ariel the Little Mermaid should be much more impressed by the fact that she's breathing air. <laughs> She's breathing air for the first time in her life. And she doesn't care. She just doesn't care. She just wakes up. I, I, I just want her to note it a little bit, you know? She wakes up on the beach and she's like, oh, wow. Oh my God, I'm not getting oxygen from diffusion anymore. I'm, I'm making these small physical changes and I'm not even thinking about it. It's just happening. And I guess, of course, all that would be an internal monologue because... You know, yeah, yeah, traded in the old speaker box. Yeah, that's right, just can't talk. All the other Disney princesses note the weird things that happen to them, you know? When Belle first walks into the castle, she's like, yo, this furniture can talk. <laughs> and when Princess, when Princess Jasmine sees the magic carpet for the first time, she's like, what the hell is that? Because it's a flying rug, it's worth noting. It's worth noting. Not Ariel, though. Not Ariel. She wakes up on the beach and she's like, boom, now that I got these legs, let's go get that prince. And I'll tell you what, guys, I'll tell you what. Not a positive role model for young girls. Not a positive role model. Because Ariel wakes up on the beach in tattered clothes and her first thought is, boom, now that I got these killer stems, let's go get the guy with all the money. Not a positive role model. Not a positive role model for young girls. How about a little less Ariel and a little more Mia Hamm? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Mia certainly did a lot more with her legs than Ariel did. That's all. That's, that's all. That's all. Maybe I need to update that soccer reference for the current Olympics, but I still think Mia is our most prominent female soccer player, so sticking with her. Um, I want to talk to you guys about something kind of, kind of serious. Don't let it get weird, though. Um, I think that uh, I have a little, just a tiny, tiny bit of homophobia in me. Well, I don't think it's homophobia. I'm not sure it's that. Uh, I'll tell you guys what happens and we'll decide together if I'm an ignorant asshole or not. Um, anytime I see a lesbian couple and one or both of them are really attractive, one singular thought pops up from the deepest part of my brain. And that thought, every time, is, <sighs> come on, that's it, every time. And guys, the words, come on, don't bother me nearly as much as the tone of come on. The tone sounds like I was just about to back into a really sweet parking spot but then at the last second, a lesbian car snuck in behind and got it. And I'm just like, hey, what the, oh, come on. That should be for me. I'm afraid that's a little bit homophobic, I'm afraid. I'm even more afraid to complete that thought in my head because I'm afraid if I complete the thought in my head, it's gonna go like, like, ah. Uh, Come on, would you, would you try one more dick? Would you try one more? I mean, maybe you just got a bad one. I don't, would you try one more? I don't know. I think that's, I don't know, I think that's ignorant on my part. It makes it sound like lesbians are deliberately hoarding hot chicks away from me. And the whole 29 years old and living with my parents thing has got nothing to do with my lady's situation. It's the lesbians. I don't. I don't think it is. Maybe that's homophobic. Maybe you guys are thoroughly weirded out right now. I don't give a shit. Uh, it happens. Um, maybe that's homophobic, but I don't know. 
Uh, but I guess the difference between uh, me and like people in the news and politicians who, who, are, who are homophobic is that uh, I'm not trying to make my stupid opinions into United States law currently. I'm just gonna let them be my stupid opinions for now. You know, I'm not trying to make them into law. I'm just a regular dude who's trying to hook up with hot lesbians. And when we get down to it, guys, isn't that what America's all about when we get down to it? Is this or is this not the land of opportunity? All right, I'm gonna work on that ending a little bit for everyone but this guy who fucking loves it. Man. I don't mean to call you out, man, but I've got to take what I can get up here. Um, so thank you. Um, last thing I'll uh, leave you with, guys, uh, before I get off stage and just rethink everything about my life, um, is uh, I'm a big fan of all these superhero movies. Uh, I saw Spider-Man, loved it. Saw Dark Knight Rises, loved it. Um, the only thing that I think these movies are missing is uh, when the damsel in distress, you know, when the girl in the movie, uh, hooks up with the alter ego for the first time. Uh, they don't notice that this unassuming dude is absolutely jacked out of his mind. You know? I just kind of wish Gwen Stacy was like, all right, high school nerd Peter Parker, let's get this uh, shirt off and, whoa, Peter, look at those abs, man. Wow, you're a science nerd, but you are hitting the gym. You even have those like hip line things that models have. Nice work. Let's get down. Let's get down. Same thing with, uh, same thing with uh, Bruce Wayne in, in The Dark Knight. Uh, if, you, if you haven't seen it, I won't ruin it for you, but there's, there's a time when uh, he just hooks up with this uh, business lady, you know? And uh, she just hooks up with him and, 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 and that's it. But uh, I kind of wish she, just, she was just like, all right, billionaire playboy Bruce Wayne, let's see what you're working with. Whoa, dude, you are jacked. You look like an MMA fighter. In college, I hooked up with a linebacker, but this is better. Wow, look at all those scars, too. You're a badass. Let's get down. I don't know. I feel like the, uh, I, I would do that. I, I feel like I would do that. Let's say, you know, I lived in fictional Gotham City and I was tearing up the Gotham City open mic circuit, because I would be. And uh, one night after a show, I'm approached by a young lady named Selena Kyle, Catwoman, for those of you who aren't into it. But I don't know, she's Catwoman, you know? We just go back to her place and hook up, and I'm like, all right, Selena, let's do this. Let's get these jeggings off, and look at your quads. Oh, my God. What are you squatting, like 450? This is amazing. Come play ball with me and my buddy sometime, but let's have sex first. Let's have sex. That's why we do it. Um, I was going to leave on that, but I don't want to now because it's weird. Uh, let me th uh, throw one more little thing at you guys. Um, not to be gross here, guys, but uh, how come diarrhea never strikes when you're near a bathroom? Doesn't seem fair, does it? Doesn't seem fair. I feel like, uh, I feel like there are a lot of sound cues to diarrhea, you know? I feel like the last thing I hear before an attack of diarrhea is, please stand clear of the closing doors. Bing bong, gagoosh. Then I'm on the subway for 35 minutes, sweating profusely and praying. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to weird it out right there. Thanks so much for your time and give it up to your host, Sophia. Thanks again.